Ah, there you are, Vic. All ready for the big day, are we? All present, correct, Mr. Larkin. Good. We, uh, we start on Friday, if my memory serves. That is correct, Vic. Are you having a sod cutting ceremony, Mr. Larkin? Yeah, certainly am, Vic. Oh, <laughs> lovely idea. Oh, one thing I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, what shape is the pool to be? Well, pool-shaped pool. I see a lot of people going for novelty shapes these days. Eh? I've done a heart-shaped one for a screen idol. I've done a piano-shaped one for a pianist. And I've done a bean-shaped one. Bean-shaped one? Who's that for? For a runner, Mr Larkin. <laughs> 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 you think about it, Mr Larkin. You can have any shape you like at very little extra cost. Can I? Why don't I get you a brochure and then you can choose one? Yeah. Well, it will be more. Absolutely splendid to see you. Edith, you look perfectly charming today. Oh, you really think so? Yes, I do, and all, and highly kissable, if I may say. Oh, gosh. oh yes, but it's got to be earned. I need you to do me a favour. Mm. Uh, well, name it, dear man. If it's humanly possible, I shall do it. Oh, it's humanly possible, all right. <laughs> I need you to hide something for me. Oh, really? mm. Hudson Judy show. How perfectly charming. It's for Ma's birthday. It's a surprise. Now, have you got somewhere where we can put it? Yes, I think I have. Oh, good, right. So, Edith, the are you take the little dolls oh, <laughs> and lead on. Right oh. It's a spiffy idea. Hudson Judy show for Mrs. Larkin's birthday. Yeah, I know. I thought it was a good idea, and all. <laughs> oh. Mrs. Larkin's a very lucky woman to have you. Uh, oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, well, no, thank you. <laughs> I'd better be on my way. I've got things to do. Fidgeting, Victoria, do. I'm trying to do your nose. <sighs> Time for a drink. Where's your father? Oh, me and my. It's good. What's, what's that supposed to be there? That's a nose. Oh, yeah. oh get us a Guinness, do. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Two shakes of a lamb's tail. First of all, I want to tell you something. Quick, everybody over here, have a look at the designs for the swimming pool. Come on. Yeah, have a look at this. They are, look. Which ones do you like best? Oh, I like that one. Because mm -hmm. it's shaped like a heart. Yes. <laughs> Which one do you fancy? Here's the one I like. That's the one I like. Oh, that one? Yeah. It reminds me of Ma. Oh, you <laughs> That's more like Diana Dolls. I'm more round shaped, you ask me. Yeah, well, that's how I see you, Ma. 
Shall I tell you what I really fancy? Yeah, go on. I fancy something more classy, with, with sort of marble and, and, and pillars. Like that in ancient Rome. That's a fantastic idea, Ma. Yes, with, with fountains and, and statues. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Ma, have you seen Edith lately? No. Something wrong? Yeah. Not sick? No, nothing like that. Just something not quite tickety-boo. Like what? Well, like... Like she's got one of those dresses, you know, like it's got pimples all over it. See a sucker? Ma, oh, language, please. No, it's the name of the material. See a sucker. It's all the rage. Was all the rage. A few years back with young girls. Shouldn't have thought it was quite Edith's style, though. Huh? Well, it isn't. It was very upsetting. She's got one of these bows in her hair with roses on it. And she's taken to wearing makeup. Pink lipstick. Well, you know those signs well as I do. Edith's got it bad for a man. Another man. Edith, another man? You're jealous, Sydney Larkin. Oh, I'm not jealous. No, yes, no, you are. I am You're not jealous. She's got not... another boyfriend. You think so? Plain as the hand in front of your face. No, never. Why don't you ask her? I will. I'll invite her to the party and see if she wants to bring anyone. Oh, oh Mr. Larkin, how spiffy. Yeah. Expect you come for your Punch and Judy show. Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I'd like to leave that here with you until the day of Ma's birthday, if that's okay. Of course. No, uh, there was something I wanted to ask you. Well, in that case, why don't you come in? I've just put the kettle on. Oh, lovely. Make yourself at home. Actually, I'll call round and invite you to Ma's birthday party. I wonder if I... Well, you know, you, yourself, uh, anyone else you'd like to bring? Lady friend or gentleman friend? Oh... <laughs> Well, thank you so much, dear man. I should adore to bring George. George? Oh, because you haven't met George, have you? No. Dear, sweet, chivalrous, handsome, charming, gallant George. Steady on, steady on, Edith. He can't be all bad. He must have a few good points as well. Oh, awful man. You'll adore George. He's led a fascinating life. Oh, about ten. Ten in the morning? Well, yes, there's an awful lot to get through, isn't there? There's, there's sod cutting, a Mars birthday cake, Punch and Judy, moon rockets, poetry reading. Poetry reading? Mm. Primrose is reading a poem, especially chosen for the occasion. Oh, sorry. Oh, how marvellous. Yes, and, of course, there's all the introductions to get through with George. <clears throat> I must admit, Edith, I'm a little jealous. Oh, you mustn't be. There'll always be a place in my affections for you, in the innermost tabernacle of my soul. But my heart must be reserved for George. You do understand, don't you? Yes, of course, Edith. You mean our passionate embraces of past times must be strictly entrepreneur? George must never know of my past indiscretions. My lips are sealed. Oh. Oh, it would be too ghastly if we found out. It could make his blood boil. Mm. His passionate Irish blood. Oh, he's Irish, is he? <laughs> 
Or is he? Oh, big gar and pour me a pint of Guinness. One of them, is it? Oh, no, he's not that sort of Irish. Mm. He's from a different part of Ireland, I think. But he speaks just like us. Mm -hmm. well, like me, anyway. Well, it's hard to explain, but you'll see what I mean when you meet him. Eggs ready. Ready. Good. We put this in here like this. Look. Yeah. Tuck that in there. Oh, look at this. Isn't that perfect? By Mademoiselle Dupont. Look, love and best wishes right from everyone at the Beau Rival. Oh, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> there we are. Who wants the card with the special stampy on? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can. Lovely. Happy birthday, Ma. You darling. Mm -hmm. no. I don't mind. Oh, yes, look at that. And another one. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. oh, thank you. I love love, ah. though he has wings. And like life can flee. But above all other things, spirit, I love thee. Thou art love and life. Oh, come, make once more my heart thy home. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Move yourself. Hello, little girl. What's your name? My name's Primrose, and I'm not a little girl. I'm 18. And I'm Elvis Presley. You're never 18. Roger! I'm Roger McGarry, Scouse person and undiscovered poet. A poet? Oh, aye. What are you reading, then? Oh, Palgrave. I particularly like Shelley. Terrible load of old rubbish. Oh, Wild West Wind, our breath of autumn's being. Shelley's soft. He's not soft. He's so romantic, so poetic. Here. Try this. It's Stevie Smith. Check out page 34. Not waving, but drowning. Now that's a poem. Come on, boys. One just here. No. Oh, good, it's a rose. Now I've seen everything. Edith's hit the ruddy jackpot. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Larkin. This is George Harron. Delighted. And these are for you, madame, on oh, your birthday. Lovely. Thank you, George. You did. How do you do? Oh, uh, how do you do? Yes. <clears throat> so, oh, perfect present, George. Yes. Well, let's go inside and start the celebrations. Yes. Uh, would you like to come this way? Thank you. That's very kind. Oh, thank you. Right, Edith. He's got a few good points. How did you meet him? 
Jim Garner Committee, Hare and Hounds. George was in the bar. We used it off immediately. Oh, see. Love at first sight, was it? Oh, I suppose it was, really. Mm, well, here's to everlasting love, then, Edith. And I like his roles. He's very comfortable, but it's not as sweet as yours. Hasn't got a speaking tube. Oh. <clears throat> oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mrs. Larkin. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Mr. Happy birthday, Ma. And here's to 20 more of them. Help me catch it. All right, then, come on. Then. Now, don't forget, make a wish. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Go on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Many happy returns, Mrs. Larkin. Many congratulations. So, what did you think of the poem? Well, it's different. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> there you are. Oh, I say, like an old chap, this really is most frightfully good. What do you call this one? It's called a moon rocket, George. Oh. <laughs> it's got something in it. <laughs> do I detect a soup of kirsch? You do. And rum. Yes. No, no, wait, no. Come on in, George, come on in. What else is in there, eh? Come on. Oh. Uh, rye whiskey, bourbon. Uh, vodka. Yes! <laughs> That's perfect! That's exactly what it's got in it! <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Larkin, yes? I've got one that'll give this one a run for its money. It's uh, an Irish thoroughbred, which I call the Malahide Mauler. Oh, the Malahide Mauler! Right, come on then, George. Well, have some of that. <laughs> no, no, I daren't make it up for you yet. Not before you cut the first sod. Don't want you falling down the hole. This is where it's going to be. Everybody gather around here. Gather around this. There we are, ready, chaps? Ready, Mr. Larkin. Here you are now. Give me what for. Here we go. Good luck. The first cut of the pool. Here we go. Oh, I'll put something on down here. I named this pool Old Faithful. <laughs> There's been a late addition to the programme for today. Roger's going to read one of his own poems. Oh, I say, bravo. We're hiring poets now, are we? You should pay attention. Oh, right. <clears throat> the Pool, a poem. <laughs> one night you said you wanted me to swim into your arms. So I built a pool. Dug it with the shovel of my hopes. Sealed it with the grouting of my dreams. And filled it up to brimming with my love. It don't rhyme, Ma. I mean, it can't be a poem if it don't rhyme. <laughs> and when I had it finished, anticipating breast and back and butterfly, you crept up behind me with your new love and pushed me in. Now I'm drowning in the pool of my own tears. The end. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, um, I've on guard. 
I like the bit about the breast and back and butterfly. I thought that was good. That was good, guys. Come and tell Pop and Ma about the Liverpool scene, Roger. It's the most exciting thing, Ma. I hope you have a more traditional attitude to concrete structures than you do to rhyme and meter, young man. Certainly, though, a good poem will outlast a pool any time. Roger knows all about Wordsworth and Dunn and Shelley. He just thinks they're soft. Well, not all of them, but... No, I... Well, we like to write in a style that mirrors the speech of today and the place where we come from. If you're a poet, how come you're building some impulse? It's just a summer job. Hey, I'd better be getting back to it. Yeah, this poetry lark's on my time. Come on, off you go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time for Ma's surprise. Oh. Yes, come on, come in the house, Ma. Come on, come on in, in the, the house. house. Yes, because you're... it's What's a surprise. No, no key, key. Go on, get in there. And no, come on, George. Come and get us out. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> Pops, there's a surprise is ready, Ma. Oh, lovely. What's he been up to? Yeah, bring that plate of sandwiches, Victoria. Don't want people going hungry. <coughs> it's a bunch of Judy shots. <laughs> 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 said we'd see off a moon rocket. The Malahide Mauler. That's the one, that's the one. All right? <laughs> That is the business, and no mistake. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's the Irish whiskey, you see. It packs a different kind of punch, <laughs> if you'll forgive the pun. <laughs> punch, yes. <laughs> I like this, too. It's a lovely colour, isn't it? That, that green, yeah? That's like the Emerald Isle. Yeah, that's the Curacao. Don't know when, old chap. <laughs> you don't want to put me on my ear, do you? Edith would never forgive me. Oh, Edith, don't worry about Edith. She's, she's a great sport, Edith. Yeah, she's a splendid girl. Yeah. Life had no meaning before I met her. Very fond. Thinking of engagement. Well, that fairly calls for another, that. Eh? Uh, no, 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 not a word to the ladies, old chap. Haven't breathed it to anyone. No, I don't suppose you and Mrs. Larkin would care to come to my place for dinner one evening, would you? I'm sure Edith would come over and cook for us if I asked her nicely. Consider that an honour and a pleasure, George. Good. Uh, I will have another then, if it's all the same. Dodger, how are you with them bricks? Coming. Hello, little girl, and what's your name? I, I know, you're not a little girl, you're a big girl like your big sister. Primrose. She's in love with you, mooning around, saying your name, and writing silly love poems. Wordsworth, hurry with them bricks. I'm coming. Would you do poem for me, please? Well, I might do if you give me one of them toffees. Roger. Bricks.
can't see the inside of this place. No. It's funny Tom Garnet leaving like that without a word. Yeah, I know. Mind you, he always was a bit of an odd ball, mm. isn't he? Someone's cooking something, anyway. Mm. Mm. <laughs> More souffle, Mrs. Larkin. No, no, thank you, Edith. <laughs> Mr. Larkin. Mm. Oh, oh. Well, thank you, Edith. No, thank you. <laughs> George. Oh, no, you've beaten me, yum yum. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it was delicious, Edith. Mm. And on a strange stove, too. Do you go for a brandy, Larkin? Oh, yes, please, George. That would be the perfect end to a perfect meal. <laughs> Whew. Good boy, this house, George. Oh, fine property. George bought it for cash. Really? Well, there's a man after my own heart. Funny Tom Garnet selling up like that. I think he needed the cash. Retired, is he? I believe so. He could afford to on the money I paid him. <laughs> Shall we leave the gentlemen to their brandies, Mrs Larkin? Oh, thank you. I'd like a private word with Sydney. We'll come in shortly. Hmm. Got a drop of fault, have you, Edith? Oh. Hello, George. What was it you wanted to talk to me about? I want to talk to you about pigs. Pigs? About buying pigs. Oh, well. No, thanks, George. I've already got some. <laughs> I'm talking about a lot of pigs. 200 fine, fat porkers. An entire piggery, in fact. Good Lord, George, you're the last man I would expect to hear going on about porkers. <laughs> Are you serious? Perfectly serious. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Blimey, George, I'm not a pig farmer, am I? I mean, I'm a... Well, I'm a... <clears throat> well, I'm certainly not a pig farmer. Why would I want to do such a thing? Money. Lots of money. Mm. What, are you made out of pigs? I can help you make an absolute fortune with almost no work on your part. I'd take care of all the details, you just pay for the piggies, then sit back and after a couple of months, you count the lolly. Oh. Now, simple enough, Mark. Jules wants to get into pigs and he wants me to get in with him too. Well, why should we want to get involved in pigs? Well, according to George, the Ministry of Agriculture is trying to boost the old English porker so it can compete, you know, with its Danish cousin. So they're offering a fiver subsidy on every pig raised. That's what I call a bonus. <laughs> yeah, so now George has got Tom Garrett's place. You might think, well, he could have as many pigs as he likes. You know, he could raise, say, a couple of thousand if he wanted to. But... Oh, there's a catch. Yeah, well, it is, isn't it? The Ministry of Agriculture says that each farmer can only raise 200 pigs each. Why? Hmm? I don't know. How's it not the reason why? How's it to do or die? Anyway, this is where I come in. See, I buy 200 pigs and keep them till the Ministry of Agriculture's inspectors verify that they're all right. How long will that take? Hmm? I don't know, a month, you know, no more. Then George buys them back off me at the same price I paid for them, right? You know, he takes them off my hands, and we split the bonus. 500 smackers for him, 500 smackers for me. All legal and above board. Ooh, <laughs> it's good, eh, Mark? Eh? <laughs> What's the matter, Mark? You're looking a bit worried. Well, there's something about him, Sid. Not bad, Lord. Well, I know I should like him, but I can't. I can't get to feel right about him somehow. I know what you want. What? Malahide Moor. Hey, Sydney, Mrs. 
talking, Victoria? Oscar! George, need it? I just wondered if you'd like to come up and see my piggies. Get you used to the idea, so to speak. See what 200 piggies look and sound like. And smell like, too. Manners, Victoria. <laughs> Help you make up your mind. Just while they're settling in, till their tummies get used to the idea. Oh, I see. George tells me they're terribly sociable. They're certainly excitable, especially the piglets. They're rather like my girl guides, really. Uh, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know more. Just think, a few weeks of the old ping pong, and then 500 smackers in our end. Ooh. Old George is a topper, and no mistake. This way. Yep. All right, here we go, let. That's all right. That's enough, Victoria. Come on. <laughs> Once more into the breach, dear friend. <laughs> oh, careful. <laughs> oh, dear man. I'm so ridiculously happy. <laughs> oh, you're happy as a pig in a piggery, eh, hey, Edith? <laughs> Seven foot four. Ten foot three. No! Keep that stick straight! Why did you do that, you malevolent little child? Because it's fun. Have you finished my poem yet? I haven't even started it, I'm afraid. There hasn't been much time to entertain the muse. Oh, goody, because I've got a new subject. It's about five little piglets. I met them up at George's. There's one other thing. They have names. I've written them down. Here. Violet Anemone, Iris Magnolia Primrose. <laughs> you named one of them after your sister, have you? Is she gonna like this? She won't mind, honestly. You're soft, you are. But it's a challenge. Give me that. Now, go on out, Fred, with the cement mixing. All right, all right. This is your last chance. OK, keep your shirt on. <laughs> Larkin. Yes, that's me. Brum's bottom is the first of your 200 pigs. Oh, there's five piglets as well. Oh, goodies. Five piglets, eh? Hey, hey, hey. Well, here we are, Mark. Pig farmer now. Oh. Makes you feel close to Mother Earth, oh, doesn't it? It certainly does, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where do I sign? I say, Mr. Larkin, you're satisfied? Oh, yes, I'm satisfied. All right, there you are, Larkin, that's it. All right, thanks. Now, where do you want to sign, David? Oh, in my barn, out the back. Look, uh, get your lads to follow me. I'll show you where I want to. Come on, boys. One hundred, and that's two hundred, Mr. Ramsbottom. All right, thank you, Mr. Larkin. So, sign the papers you got there, um, I'll be off. Oh, sure you don't want a little something for you, though? No, I've got a lot. 
Well, goodbye then. Right. And good luck. Good muck, more like. <laughs> 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 Sweetheart. Just leaving, Pop. Good. Have a nice day. Fane eh. disse, guardi in giro, dice. Eh, sì. Abbiamo scavato qui e poi bisogna ancora scavare di lì. Eh, Quindi. Sì. Ehi, ciao! Ah. Morning. Hey, now that I understood. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Roger. Oh, there you are. Hiya, Primmy. I wish you wouldn't call me that. Why don't you like it? Oh well, I thought it was rather friendly myself. I don't want to be friends. Well, that makes four of you then, because Vic and Fred and Ted don't want to be my friends either. So why are you set on enmity, Primrose? I'm not set on enmity. It's just I'd like us to be more than friends. I think you're it's so difficult to explain. So I've written a poem. Well, let's see it then. No, I'd rather read it to you. Oh well, read on then. Poem for Roger. He's a bit of a dodger, Roger. At least that's what Vic says. When he sits and talks to me, under Pop's spreading walnut tree. But I don't agree. To me, he's A-OK, -okay, Roger, over and out. Well, well. That's really good, Primrose. <laughs> you like it? No. But you said it was really good. Yeah. So how can you not like it? Because it's not you. It's not your voice, Primrose. It's my voice. It's like it's a... It's a brilliant copy, Primmy. You know, you, you caught all the cadences, all the style. I'm really impressed. But poetry's... Real poetry is about finding your own voice. But I'll never find a voice here. It's so quiet. It's dull. I want to find it in Liverpool. I want to go there with you. No, you, you can't go there with me. Roger, why not? Because I'm working here with Vic for the whole summer, remember? Hey, and I better get back to him or he's going to be after me again. See you, Primmy. Present and correct, then, Mr. Selby. They seem healthy enough. Of course, we need the best quality stock if we're to compete with Danish imports. Oh, yes, Mr. Selby, absolutely. I'm not too happy about the state of that barn. Top quality pigs deserve top quality accommodation. Yes, Mr. Selby, I'll see what I can do, yeah. Right, I'll return in three weeks to confirm the bonus on live pigs. Right. There's something I wanted to ask you. Um, why is it we're only allowed 200 pigs? That's tosh. Read the regulations. Have as many as you like, provided you can house them and feed them. <laughs> Good work, Ted. Grazie, Vic. Good work, Fred. Hey, grazie, Vic. Good work. Where's he gone now? I poeta. He gone to write poetry. Right, that's it. That's one too many of this time. Roger the Dodgers for the sack. Oi! Prim 
Almost stop. Would you like to do my poem? You can't write poems. Actually, Roger wrote it for me. Shall I recite it to you? I know how you like his poetry. Go on, then. Pig poem by Roger McGarry. Five little piggies not going to the market, far too sensible, want to stay alive. Primrose, Violet, Tyrus, Anemone, Magnolia, I intend it to fly. You little pig! You interfering, sneaky little pig! Ha 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 ha! Immature, awful, unpoetic pig! Primrose? Primrose? Hey, come on. What's up with my little girl, eh? Ma? Ma, could you come in here, please? I think we need a bit of help. Heavens above, sweetheart. You are upset. Tell us what's up, darling. <laughs> it's Roger! <laughs> so, has that boy been bad to you, is he? No. That's just it. He's lovely to me. Yes, he's a nice boy. I said so. Oh, what's the matter, my little chicken, eh? Well, first Victoria got him to make up a poem about piglets. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> The piglets are all called by my name. <laughs> Victoria made such a fool of me with Roger. Bad Victoria. <laughs> now she's gone and called five of our piglets by my names as well. It's not fair. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll talk to that wicked, cruel child. And I'll explain to Roger as well. He'll be all right. He'll understand. Because he's not here to explain to him. Well, where's he gone? He got the sack. Sack? They gave him the sack for being lazy. But he wasn't lazy. He was thoughtful and idealistic and romantic. Now he's gone back to Liverpool and I'll never see him again in my life. Go after him, Mark. Looks like she's got a serious crush on that boy. <laughs> Can I come in, darling? Yes. isn't it, when you want the stars and you can't have them? <sighs> Don't you fret. One of these days, they're going to fall down out the sky and make a crown for your pretty head. You've got a voice, Ma. Like Roger said, I'd have one day. You had a crush on him. I can't say I blame you. It wasn't just a crush, Ma. I love him. Does he feel the same about you? I don't know. Listen, nightingales. <laughs> They're singing to each other. They're happy just to be alive. <laughs> oh, maybe it's for the best he's gone. Love will come soon enough. It'll bring great things, fabulous things. But it'll take things away, too. Never give them back. Listen. You will never 
he's 16 and listening to nightingales again. <laughs> Live the life you've got, Primrose, as full as you can, every minute of it. Love will come soon enough. Like it did for me and Pop. Mariette, too, in the time. It'll come soon enough. Victoria? I want a word with you, young lady. Yes, Pop? No, I don't think you're playing fair. What? What? It's bad enough you calling five of George's little piglets by your sister's names. But it's even worse making fun of her with that poem laugh in front of Roger, especially knowing how she feels about She's it. She's stopping. But it's downright wicked you calling five of our piglets by her names as well. I haven't renamed them, Pop. What do you mean? They're the same five little piglets I made up with at George's place. Eh? Hey? Look. This one's Primrose, this one's Violet, this one's Iris, this one's Enemy. Are you sure? Certain. See? She's got a mole in the same place as Zinnia. Are you certain that these are the same five little piglets that were up at George's place? Positive pop. And their mum's here as well. Sweetheart. Just as I feared, not a sausage. Been diddled. But where are George's pigs? I've got them. I don't know exactly how George's scheme works, but I do know it's a con. Con artist, Amo. <laughs> Fooled me completely. Well, there's not many can do that. No. Uh, got to hand it to him, though. Pulling one over on me. <laughs> you got to laugh. <laughs> oh. And what are you going to do? I don't know, Ma. Tell you one thing, though. Got enough bacon to last the year.
penny for them. Mm. Yeah, I was just thinking about those blessed pigs. Hard not to think about them. Two hundred of them. I know George is trying to pull a fast one, but I can't work out what it is or what to do about it. Yet. Come on, sleepyhead. Primrose? I could always sell them. True. But I don't want to sell them. Cos George is up to some sort of racket. I want to find out what it is. Ma, Primrose is in her room and look. Oh. <sighs> what is it, Ma? She's gone after Roger. To Liverpool. Oh, my Lord. Juliet was right. Parting is such sweet sorrow. I shall return. Fear not, Edith. Georgie will be back. The time alone will be such torment. I must go. See you in a fortnight. Hmm? Thank you. Excuse me. Can you tell me where the cave club is, please? Address. Don't fret, Mrs. Larkin. You'll find her safe and sound. You mark my words. Oh, Vic, I can't help but fret. We don't know she got as far as Liverpool. No, oh, no. Depends upon how much money she's got. If she's got enough money for the train. I'll just check. Yeah, good idea, Mom. Good idea. Of course, she might have taken to this new hitchhiking lark. Makes your blood run cold to think of her on this new M1 thing, getting a lift from one of them, them, what the... Turn up, boys. Yeah, that's them. It makes you break out in a cold sweat, doesn't it, eh? She's got some money. Hello? Not a lot, but enough for the train. Look, about five are in there. Look at that, look. Pigs. Pigs again. <sighs> Liverpool. <laughs> Who in their right mind wants to go to Liverpool? Excuse me. How much is it to get in? It's free, love. It's the only way Rog can lure him in to listen to his grotty poetry. It's not grotty. No oh, goody. As it happens, I don't think it's grotty either. In fact, I love Roger's poems. You're a pal of Roger's? Yes, very much so. I'm a fellow poet. Well, go on in. He's only got one or two more to do. And the boys are on. Great. I'd like to do a new poem now for you called Tilly. <clears throat> knowing that you love me, Tilly, knowing that you care, makes my life complete, Tilly. Makes my garden fair. I can truly say, Tilly, say it cause it's true. Life was truly silly, Tilly, till there was... You! Ow! That's dragon's blood. Don't tell me they got dragon's blood up there cause I won't believe you. All right then. Need those. You don't need petrol. They've got plenty of petrol in Liverpool. Oh, and you certainly don't need that. Sorry, Primmy Girl, I've got no milk. Primrose. Yes, Roger. Primrose. You've got to go home. No, please. I want to stay here with you. Primrose, look. I... How old are you, girl? I'm 16 and three months. Please, please let me stay. But, I mean, shouldn't you be at school? I've taken all my exams, so there's nothing much to do there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Phone your dad. If he says it's OK, we'll find a room for you. Oh, thank you, Roger. Thank you.
Hello. Primrose. Thank the Lord. Oh, Ma, it's fab. You should see what's going on here. Music and poetry. And there's a screw. What? Of course I know what I'm doing. I just worry about you all the way up there. It's what? Oh, talk English, Primrose. This is the most happening place in the world right now. Happening. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I promise, Ma. I'll phone every night. And tell Pop not to worry. I'll come home soon. Yeah, OK. Bye. I can stay, but I have to be back for the opening of the pool. Kids. She get it from me or you? Hey. Her spirit. You, of course. Oh, you always were a right little mover. <laughs> Even when I first met you. Still are, come to think about it. <laughs> Give us a kiss for Primrose. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, give us one for Marriott now, will you? <laughs> come on. Give us one. Come on. Anyway, there's Montgomery. I forgot. There's the twins. Oh, get <laughs> oh, well, God's in his heaven and no mistake. Primrose is safe. All's underway. George. Oh. George, George, George. Every time I start to get a bit calm, I think about George and his porkers. I'm going to phone him. Hello? Oh. Hello, Mr Larkin. George, no, you've just missed him. Two weeks? No, 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 it's nothing important, Edith. No. He is coming back, though, isn't he? Of course. My heart would break if he doesn't. Mine too, Edith. Mine too. Yeah, bye-bye now. Bye. He's not there. He's gone away. Hardly surprising, is it? What are you going to do now? Uh, there's only one thing to do. Go and see the bloke who brought us the pigs. What's his name? Ramsbottom. So where did you get the pigs from? From Mr Aaron's place, George's place, where he was holding them for you. That's it. They're the same pigs. Oh, look. You was to pay me, which you did. I was to give him the money, which I haven't yet, because he's off at the moment, and I was to pick him up again from you in a month or so. You take him back to George's place? No, take him to the next bloke. What do you mean, the next bloke? I pick pigs up here. I put pigs down there. I do what George tells me to do, and nobody's complained yet. I see. Well, thanks very much, Mr Ramsbottom. You've been a great help. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, um. George's address. You haven't got it, have you? I seem to have lost it. Yeah, I think I've got it here. Hang on. What's that? Yeah, there you are. Mount Usher, Chillum. He's never there, mind, but that's his address. All right. Thanks again, Mr Ramsbottom. All right. Cheerio. I'll see you when I come back from the fish. Don't you bet on it, son. Basically, there's only one lot of pigs. Right. And what George does, he just keeps selling them on. He sells them to one poor gullible geezer after another. And then every time he buys them back, he pockets half the government subsidy. So that means he gets 500 smackers every time for doing nothing at all. Doesn't sound very legal to me. Well, of course it isn't legal. He's conning the ministry out of all them subsidies, isn't he? And then Muggins here, he's being used. And I'm paying to feed his pigs into the bargain. Very clever. Why do you want to go to all the trouble of buying Tom Garnet's place? Oh, he hasn't bought Tom Garnet's place. He probably just leased it from him. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Is Mount Usher near here? 
Mount Asha, near here. First night, past the parish church, can't miss it. You're not talking, are you? You're not begging? No, certainly not. Because if you was, you'd best carry on past Mount Asher. Orca's doom, they call it. Got a fierce dog, is it? <laughs> Much worse than a fierce dog. But if you're not orking and you're not begging, you might hazard it. Thanks very much. I'm going to take a look round the back, Mole. You stay here, all right? Good afternoon. I was uh, wondering if Mr. George Harron was about. You're not one of his wretched associates, are you? Because if you are. Uh, no, 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 I'm not, no, no. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> well, it's rather a delicate matter, actually. <laughs> it's always rather delicate where George is concerned. Does he owe you money? Well. Serves you right for even bidding him the time of day. Toad. It's a bit more complicated than that. It's always complicated where George is concerned. He owes me money. But don't worry, I'll take it in skin and hair when I catch him. Do you know his whereabouts? No. No, I was hoping that you might. Having the foggiest. But I'll find him. And if I catch him with another woman... Many a good hanging saved a bad marriage. Marriage? Excuse me, are you Mrs. Harron? To my everlasting regret. Gorgon, producer, say goodbye to our visitor. It's like it said, Ma, George is not only a con man, he's a married con man. A bigamist. <sighs> oh, poor Edith. Mm. Someone's going to have to tell her, Sid. What are you looking at me for? Well, she trusts you. She ain't got no one else. <laughs> From you, fellow. Come in at once. How delightful to see you. Pigs all right? Oh, yeah, all right. A bit pongy, but all right. <laughs> Just a sign of natural functioning, eh? Mine must be supernatural, then. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Edith. Is there any chance of a snifter at all? Uh, um, Irish, all right? Oh, yeah, fine. 
It was a present from George. George. Good old George. Edith, about George. Fond of him, are you? Oh, besotted. I've never been so happy in my entire life. This is for your ears only. He's proposed. And I've accepted. But you can't. I mean, he's all... It's marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. There are no words to describe my happiness at the moment. And not only that, but George has let me in on the ground floor for some of his investments. Investments? The pigs and the farm. The farm? Hmm. I put a little towards the purchase, and George, in his generosity, has translated that into half ownership for me. Isn't it wonderful? Unbelievable. And the pigs? Oh, I put up half the money for the pigs. Every penny I own. Do you mean to say you own half my... Half his pigs? I certainly do. Isn't it terrifically exciting? Do you think I could have another one, Edith? I think I've developed a bit of a thirst. You didn't tell her? No. Well, we're going to have to do something. Just couldn't do it, Ma. I couldn't hurt her feelings like that. Edith's got to know the truth about George. Oh, no. Make matters worse. He's taking her money and all. Never. Oh, well, we're going to have to get that back. And do it somehow without upsetting her. Yeah. That's the most important thing of all. What's it to be? What we've got to do is to find a way to save Edith's feelings and get her money back. And I think I've got a plan that's going to sink George. But we're going to need the help of Angela Snow. A preacher in the pulpit roars with all his might. Sing a glory! Yeah. Hi, Roger. Oh, hi, Primmy. I wanted to show you this. I wrote it this afternoon. I took your advice. I'm trying to use my own voice. Oh, that's great, Primmy. Great. I'm going to look at it later, OK? But we were just going to go and have a dance. I'll see you in a bit, OK? <laughs> Passionate, I suppose. No. What do we say to convince her that he's really up and left forever? Well, I thought that missionary idea of yours was a good one. All right, then. Right. So, George is a returned missionary. Home for a break. When he was tempted by, um... Hang on, I got the phrase. Uh, yeah. Her bountiful charms. It's very good, Ma. Yes, that is very good indeed. Yes, he was tempted by Edith's bountiful charms. Ah. 
Mm. But now, in the cold light of day, he sees the... The error of his ways. Error of his ways. And he has to return to his calling, which is his missionary work. On a sheep farm in Patagonia. Patagonia. Where's that, then? No idea. There's an expedition going there, look. Oh, all right. Pat. Pat. Uh, uh, go. Yeah. E-R. Right. Mm. And he has left tickets. For Edith to have a week's holiday in Paris. Oh, lovely. And, and, and he's going to give her back her money for her pigs and for the farm. He better. Farm. Now, what we need is a good ending. Yeah. Oh, here, look. Marge column is a letter. Marge, da da da. As long as breath persists in this frail body. Frail body? <laughs> I hardly described yours as that. Nay, till the myriad stars fall from the sky. Myriad stars? Yes, better. There shall remain in the innermost sanctuary of my soul a place that is forever sacred to the memory of my own. Rebecca, it says here, but we'll put Edith. Better still, put Yum Yum. No, yum Yum's too much. No, you have me sign it Georgie Porgy next. Oh, there. Now, I'll write it up nice and neat and get it to Edith. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for Angela? Oh, uh, yes. She's away on holiday, I'm afraid. I'm minding the house. Let me guess, you must be Pop Larkin. Yes. I am indeed, yes. I'm Jasmine Brown. I've heard a lot about you from Angela. Have you? Have you really? Yeah, I'd like to book one of your Silver Wings luxury breaks in Paris, please. Oh, expense is no object. Uh, a week, yes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds perfect. Yes, it's uh, for Miss Edith Pilchester. <gasps> what a hilarious idea. Mm. You're a wicked man, Pop Larkin. Oh, I know. You'll do it, though, won't you, Jasmine? <laughs> Would Angela have done it? What? <laughs> Has Pinocchio got a wooden nose? <laughs> oh, well, in that case, George's goose is cooked. <laughs> Angela and I graduated through virginity together. Dear. <laughs> You're terrible, you are. You're worse than me. You're worse than Angela. No one's worse than Angela. But I try. I believe that. Right. Come on, boys, hurry up. Mara will be in a minute with Edith.
see, he's gone. What a trace. I can't believe it. Gone. Hey, Georgie. He had a missionary's face. Pop remarked on it. Indeed he had. What softens the blow, Mrs Larkin? What makes it more bearable is that he had to leave for such noble reasons. Yes. You're very noble. Well, there's no point in hanging around here, Edith. No. We don't want to miss the week of a lifetime in Gay Perina, do we? No. I shall try my utmost to enjoy myself. It's what George would have wanted. Bathing us. Just adds that extra bit of tone to the pool. Oh, that'll impress your family, won't it, Ma? Yeah. Ma's got her family coming up from South End. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody package? Mm. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Go on then. Oh, that's lovely. Grazie, yeah, so it's all ready then, is it? Are you all right? <laughs> yeah, not leaking or nothing. Got the bang in, have you? <laughs> <laughs> we put the diving board on last thing, then it'll be ready for tomorrow. Oh, good. Oh, thanks. Now let's hope to God that George comes. Oh, he'll come all right. I want to collect his half of the bonus. <laughs> bonus? He'll get a bonus all right. You mark my words. I know my brother's going to town. Stick away, mate. Stick away. Riding the billy goat, leading the hound. Stick away, mate. Stick away. With the hound dog bark, the billy goat jump. How do you know Roger doesn't love me? Don't ask. I just know. I've known him years. He's a little dote, but he doesn't love you. But why? Aren't I attractive? Oh, you're gorgeous, girl. I think he's potty myself. But that's Rog. He feels all paternal, like wants to look after you, not go to bed with you. I love him. I haven't heard that word in years. It's nice, though. It's nice to meet someone who's 16 and still believes in love. I'm too old for all that soppy stuff. So? What? So what are you going to do? I'm going to go home. Tell Roger. Tell him I've gone home to listen to the nightingales. Hello, Sydney. Hello, George. What are you doing here? N nothing wrong, is there? I'm afraid it's Edith. What? Well, she's, um... Good God, you, you don't mean she's dead? Dead? No, no, no. No, she's not dead, no. She's, um... Well, she's run away. Fled. Vamoosed. Vamoosed? Edith? Is this a joke? No, no, it's not a joke, George, no. That's why I've waited here, as I've done for the last five nights. Because I wanted to prevent you coming back and just 
Well, finding her gone. Because I knew what a shock that would be to your system. Good God, man, you're not telling me she just upped and left. No, I did. She could be very impulsive, can Edith. I mean, you thought you knew her, but... Uh... Good Lord. Yeah. Midnight flit. What? Yeah. I saw the lights. I thought it was the Aurora Borealis, but no, they were the headlights of the Leyland Tiger coming to take Edith and her chattels away. <sighs> Women. <laughs> Mm. Your pig's very quiet tonight, George. Mm. Uh, didn't she leave a, a note at a forwarding address? No, nothing. She's got a sister in Alberta. Alberta? In Canada. She might have gone there. Say, George, your pigs are very quiet tonight, aren't oh, they? They're fine, they're fine. But, Sydney, what am I going to do? Well, you look all in, George. Why don't you come back to the house for a couple of snifters and a welcoming bed? Well, that's very decent of you. It's not all that late. Ma will still be up. Come on, you follow me. That's an excellent idea. I'm dog tired. Driven from near Cambridge today. Well. Uh, you mustn't let it upset you. You'll be all right, I promise. He needs me to take care of him. Nothing's going to happen. I'll call you soon. Oh, hey, I'll right, go back home get you. Look, Ma, look who's here, look. Oh, George. Good luck, Oh, come and sit down. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, terrible about Edith. Most bizarre, unexpected. Woman in love, you see, George. Driven over the edge by passion. Terrible blow. Oh, thank you. Your pig's all right. Hmm? Oh, perfect, George. Yeah. Pass their exams with flying colours. A few more days and it'll be bonus time. Of course, tomorrow we're opening the pool. Yes, yes, sir. Uh... In fact, that's why I came back today. Couldn't miss that, eh? I should hope not. Now we've got a very full day planned. Mm. Oh, splendid. Which we fully intend that you will play a major role. <laughs> what you need now is a good night's kip. Yes, well, uh, I am a bit weary, I must confess. He can stay here, can't he, Ma? Of course he can. The attic room's all made up. Got another guest upstairs, Jasmine Brown. Lovely girl. Your pot's a dough, but she's all on her own, bless her heart. Oh, yeah, she's lovely. Anxious to meet you. She's heard a lot about you, George. Has she, by Jove? <laughs> yeah, she's asleep now, but mm. don't worry, you'll see her in the morning. to the slaughter. They don't suspect a thing. <laughs> Lambs to the slaughter. <laughs> How do I look? Perfect. Come on, you must have one of these. Yeah. There you are. Lovely. Just had a call from the station. Mrs. Harron's arrived. Her taxi should be here in ten minutes. <gasps> ten minutes, right. Quick. Now, bottoms up. You upstairs on the double. Make sure you waylay George. Consider him waylaid, Pop. Good girl. Mm. Mm. Right. Oh. Wait, wait. Oh. Wait, wait. 
Jasmine Brown. Oh, yes, 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 they told me. I was just on my way to the pool. Oh, oh <laughs> steady. You've been having one of those lock-in specials, I know. Gosh, no. Uh, George Harron, by the way. I could do with a cooler. You look marvellously cool, George. I love your outfit. Really? Stunning. And that cravat. I adore men in cravats. Well. Let's sit down. Here, where it's quiet. Well, indeed. Why not? Mrs. Harron, very pleased to meet you again. Where is he? Eh? Where is who? My blasted husband. Oh, him. He's probably round the back, admiring the swimming pool. Swimming pool? In this dump? Yes, indeed. Today's the official opening, in fact. Yes. <laughs> We're playing blind man's bath later on. I demand to see him. Certainly, but first, permit me to do the introductions. This is Flo. Flo, this is Mrs. Harron. I've heard so much about you. Oh? About your power over women. Oh? Oh? Uh, who told you this? Oh, people. People, eh? Men or women? Both. I understand you make all the men blisteringly jealous. And all the women... <laughs> well... Uh, I've had my moment. I'll bet you have. And still will, I hope. I wonder if I shouldn't show my face. Larkin will be wondering what I've got up to. I'm a guest, after all. Oh, the Larkins never worry about things like that. Guests here can do what they like. Disappear into the woods. Play hide-and-seek. Sit on the stairs. <laughs> it's all free and easy here. You know, of course, that they're not married. Good Lord. Larkin by name, Larkin by nature. <laughs> <laughs> Family motto, <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, I love sitting on the stairs, don't you? <laughs> Not in there. Oh, that's funny. He was here a moment ago. Well, he'd better be here. It's his skin or yours. must be stifling in that jacket. Why didn't you take it off? Hmm? Or better still, why don't we go for a swim? Oh, topping idea. Uh, but I haven't got any trunks. Oh, that's not a problem. Pop has some spares in the bathing huts. And we won't be disturbed there. Splendid idea. Splendid. Come with me. Here we are. I say. <laughs> we can get you changed in there. <laughs> no, he's not in there. No, definitely not in there. No. No, I wouldn't go in there. Oh, awful pigs. Oh, really? The Larkins have a boat. Perhaps we'll take a trip later. Oh, pa! 
perfect hideaway. Such a quaint idea, undressing in a bathing hut. It's more private, I suppose. <laughs> Certainly. You can do what you like in here, and nobody would ever know. Trousers first? Really? Oh, red ones. Swap. <laughs> Are you sure he's here? Oh, absolutely. I can't imagine where he's got to. Uh, Mrs. Heron, uh, would you like a drink or a sandwich or something? If I thought for one moment that I'd been lured here under false pretenses, Mrs. Larkin, I can assure you there would be hell to pay. No, he's definitely here, Mrs. Heron. I think I'll look over there again. Excuse me. I'm sorry, my dear. I'm looking for my husband. Not guilty. Good Lord. That was my wife. Your wife? Uh, estranged. A long story. I, I mean, she'll kill me, literally, if she finds me like this. I mean, good Lord, she, she might come back. No, she won't, George. Larkin. You're safe in here, George. That is, of course, as long as no one tells her. This is a setup, you cads. Mm. Can't you understand? If she catches me like this, it, it'll be a scandal. It'll be divorce courts and photographs in the newspapers. I mean, it'll be the end of our joint bank accounts. You brought this on yourself, George. Let's have Edith's money for the pigs. I haven't got any money. Oh, well, in that case... Mrs. Harry! No, no, wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Edith's money for the farm. Oh, come on, be fair. She's only out there, George. How do I know you won't tell her I'm in here? I'll keep my word, George. Never broken it, ever. I solemnly swear I will not tell your wife where you're hiding. What about her? I swear, I won't tell her where you are, unless, of course... Come on, George. It's your only chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And mm -hmm. my money for the pigs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck in Patagonia, George. Patagonia? Yeah. Best thing you ever did was go in there. Come along, Jasmine. Bon voyage, George. Please, uh, can I have my trousers? <laughs> <laughs> well, almost time to christen the pool. <laughs> It's going to be a grand finale and no mistake. Yeah, yeah. Vic's taking the keys out of his roller. 
Goes well to end you, all right, boy. Primrose! Primrose, sweetheart! Hey, this calls for a cocktail in my fashion. George! Lovely to be home. <laughs> I think you're going to like this one, made especially for the occasion. I was going to call it In at the Deep End, but I think I'll just call it Welcome Home. <laughs> Sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> There she is. Here, oh, there. Come on. <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh. I'm so surprised. Hey. Hey. Oh, kind of you hey. to come and meet me. Not kind, Edith. Just good neighbours, that's all. <laughs> <sighs> well, how was Paris? Oh, it was marvellous. Quite marvellous. Mm. Although not the same without George. No, of course not. No. <laughs> Yeah. Edith, about George. He wrote me a letter and, well, he asked me to give you this. Oh, what a kind and generous man he is. Was. Oh, I can't help feeling that life won't be quite the same without him. I'd agree with you there, Edith. Still. You want to get in the back of me, Edith? Still, yes, come on. come on. That's it. In you go, Edith. That's it. That's it. I'll try it. Up you go, more. Oh. Hey. <laughs> now then, Edith. What do you say to a nice bit of ham and a snifter back at Shane now, right? Mr. Larkin, you are kind. Not kind, Edith, not kind. Just good neighbours, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>